Hey there, Connor Bailey from Edson Marine, and today we're going to show you how to properly inspect and maintain your idler assembly. For sailboats with chain and wire steering systems, it is imperative that you get below deck and inspect your idler assembly once a year and before any passages. The idler assembly is what your pedestal is bolted to below deck. It acts as the foundation and deflects the wire back to the radio drive wheel or quadrant. While inspecting, you will need a flashlight and a camera. Your cell phone's camera will work fine, and a headlamp will help keep your hands free. You will also need a wrench. Fixed is preferred in this situation, as well as a pair of needle nose pliers. While inspecting, you want to take pictures to create a physical log of what your components look like. You first will want to inspect the backing plate. The backing plate for the idler assembly may look different depending on the configuration of your steering system. If your boat was built prior to the year 2000, your backing plate may be made out of plated steel. Even older boats could have a bronze backing plate. Boats built after the year 2000 will most likely have an anodized aluminum backing plate or a bronze backing plate. If it looks distraught or the pulleys are falling off, it's safe to say that an inspection has not happened in some time. The bottom of the base may look serviceable, but underneath where it connects to the deck may not look so good. The only way to truly know if your backing plate is in working order is to detach it from your pedestal. To drop the idler plate down from the deck, you first need to inspect the four bolts that are holding it there. At the end of each bolt is a half inch by 13 thread nut, most likely made out of aluminum. Take your wrench and put it on each one of the nuts, making sure that they can still turn. If they can't turn, apply some penetrating oil and let it sit for a while. You're going to want to loosen the wire back at the radial drive wheel or quadrant to give the wire rope some slack. Then you can take the four nuts off of the idler. Note that the idler may drop while you're unloosening those four bolts. If any of the nuts are frozen on, you're still gonna have to get it off. That means even if you have to cut it. Now with the idler plate down, you can inspect the top of the plate. Try to look for any structural compromises that will hinder your steering system. If you're not too sure what you're looking at, take those photos and send it to our customer service team. We'll be happy to tell you what you're looking at. If the backing plate, the bolts, and the nuts all look good, it's time to move on to the uprights that hold your shivs, also known as pulleys. It's easiest to inspect this if it's installed back up or fully taken off of the boat, depending on how much room you have down below. If you are going to install the idler back to inspect the shivs, get some Tef gel to isolate the bolts from the nuts to easily take them off next time. You're going to want to check the groove of the shiv itself, as well as the edge. If there's any wear on the lip, then your shiv is misaligned and you're gonna need to loosen this bolt to then readjust it. If there's any wear, you're better off replacing the shiv altogether. Each shiv rides on a pin. There should be some play side to side, but never play to move forward and back or up and down. You're gonna wanna remove the cotter pin and fully take apart this assembly to properly inspect it. That's the only way you're going to know what the inside of the bearing looks like on the shiv itself. You're going to need to inspect the pins for wear. If they're brass, replace them right away for stainless. The brass pins were in production until about the 1980s and now have reached their service point. The brass pins simply wear out faster and if there was no lubrication added to them, these will be your failing point. Next, you're going to want to inspect the bushing of the shiv. If there was any play in the shiv before when you were inspecting it, there might be an issue with the pin itself or the bearing liner of the shiv. You can replace the bearing liner or the pin or the shiv all together to make sure that your steering system is safe. In our higher performance steering systems, the bushing here is replaced with a needle bearing. These will also need to be inspected and possibly replaced. For boats built from 1960 to 1990, it would be surprising if there wasn't any wear or damage to the shivs themselves. 
When you do put the shiv assembly back together, please use new cotter pins. If you use the old ones, those will be your failing points. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that your wire tensioning is done correctly. If you haven't seen this before, there's a link in the description below on how to do this. If any of the shivs, bearings, or pins are damaged, these components can be replaced to get your idler assembly back up and running. If you are going to replace your chain and wire steering system or your engine control cables, you should first inspect your idler assembly as both your chain and wire and engine control cables run through the assembly. You don't want to have to do the work twice. If you're already taking apart your idler assembly to inspect and maintain it, now is the time to replace your chain and wire and engine control cables. In the description below, we have a link to download our steering inspection checklist. This list goes over all of the components that are in your steering system. Not everything that's on the list will pertain to your sailboat, but everything that's in your sailboat will be on that list. You will also find a link to our sailboat data sheets, which gives you a rough sketch of your steering system and the parts that are inside of it. If you haven't already checked out our overview on steering systems, click the link here. It goes over the four major components that are involved in a chain and wire steering system. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, post them in the comments down below, or you can always give our customer service a call or send them an email. Hold on. Still have the mask on. You're, you're, you're what? What is this? No. No, 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 no. And I forgot my line.